Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions. This one actually came via email, and Julian just wants me to review this hand he played at 1 2. So let's check it out. Okay, so this hand is from a 1 2 live game. The under the gun player raises to 12, who is described as aggro tarred and fishy, and raising pretty much every other hand folds round, cutoff calls, and Hero decides to call as well, and says that he's essentially just going to call and play poker. Now, I feel a lot of players will do this exact same thing and will just massively overlook 3-betting, but we have to have a discussion about 3-betting here. This is one of those where if the cutoff had anything, he would have 3-bet himself. So the cutoff is essentially out of this hand. I don't care about him. He's just doing the same thing that most players are going to do. Call with a suited connector, call with a set mine, call with something like ace jack and try to figure it out and go forward. So he never has a big hand. He has all these like marginal hands that he's going to gladly fold if we go up to something like 48 or 50. So let's just go up to 48 or 50 and fight for the 38. I'm sorry, fight for the 27 in the middle. And yes, it's going to feel silly when you come over the top, the aggro tar jams, and you run into aces. Yes, that sucks, it never feels great, but it is what it is. But the aggro tar will gladly give you action with second best hands, there are things like nines, there are coin flips, there are all those kind of things that I think the aggro tar will get money in with, and of course he may just, just drill it for no reason because he's aggro tardy and lol he has no fold button. So you have to three bet here in my opinion. I think it's criminal to try to f say, okay, I'm just gonna call here and try to play poker because if you've never looked at it before, if you plug it into something like Flopzilla, you know, look at how often you're gonna be stuck with these like tough, tough hand types, right? You're gonna have like second-ish pair, what, 45% of the time. You're gonna have third or worse pair, like 18% of the time. You're gonna have a lot of difficult situations when you just call here and even worse so when you're out of position. So because of that, I'd much rather play this aggressively, 3-bet it up to something like 50 and go forward from there, rather than call, try to get cute, try to like play poker post-flop, which is going to be a bear when you don't even have that deep of an SPR to begin with. So again, I'd much rather see a 3-bet here, but as played, here it does flat, goes here, flops top set, which makes life nice and easy, here it checks, faces a bet, fold from cutoff, and here it decides to check raise to 60. So backing up a couple of ticks, I like the fact that we're checking here because we could assume the aggro tar is going to bet a lot. Maybe it can come where we check, he bets, cut off calls, we get that extra source of implied odds, that's all well and good. So I'm glad to see that. However, when the cutoff folds and we decide to check raise, what are we getting action from? Right, we're gonna get action from Jax Plus, awesome. We're gonna get action from worse sets, okay, fine. We're gonna get action from big draws, and that's probably about it. So in this situation, you have like huge board lock, right? It's just really difficult for someone to have enough second best hands that will gladly give you action in a situation like this. So because of that, keeping in line with his aggro tardy behavior, why not just call the 20, let him barrel all turns, and just really utilize the fact that he's too aggressive for his own good, and just let him bomb into you. I don't see check raising here making much sense, because it's really difficult for him to continue, unless he has like just a small subset of combos. So I think all you're doing here is losing him a large chunk of the time with hands like ace-king, ace-queen, king-queen, and you know, all the plethora of other hands that he would gladly just bomb on you on turns and rivers. So I'd much rather actually see a check call here. And obviously it's just kind of a special scenario because we're against someone who we never have to worry about balance because he's just not that kind of player. And we have massive board lock, which is leading me into playing this very, very passive E-type game, which I, I typically don't advise, but there, of course, are situations for it, and I think this is a very proper situation. So as played, Agritard calls, turn fills up the flush draw, and here decides to rip it, and very happy with this. I would definitely be shoving this as well if he has jacks plus. Cool, let's get it in. If he happened to improve on spades, good for him, whatever. Not super worried about it. And unfortunately, in this exact situation, we not only run into spades, but we run into the worst kind of spades, and he ships it with a straight flush. Okay, so I need to go on a little bit of a rant here. 
And Julian, please know that this is not directly aimed at you. This is not solely at you by any stretch of the imagination. It's just unfortunately this hand kind of sparked this rant from me. So a lot of people send me hand histories, like tons and tons and tons, and I have more hands than I possibly know what to do with. And I swear at least 20 to 25% of them are coolers, and they're just boring hands because there's nothing you can do. It's a cooler. This hand was going in regardless. It doesn't matter if the agrotard shoves the flop and you get it in and it sucks that you lose. It doesn't matter. It's a cooler. It is what it is. Just chalk it up. What matters is that you made the right decisions leading up to the point that you put your money in. And in this situation, again, you made two critical errors, not three betting preflop, check raising the flop. I think those are two pretty big errors in this exact situation. So anything that happens after the important parts of the hand simply don't matter. And it's not that they don't matter to me, like I'm saying, like, you know, I'm above anything or anything like that. It's just something they don't matter. You're wasting brain power by focusing on them. Does this beat suck? Sure. Is this kind of a cooler? For sure. Does it matter? Not in the least. Because coolers are baked into the game. You're going to cooler other people, they're going to cooler you. Same percentage, same distribution, does not matter. So because of that, whenever a cooler happens, don't just like instantly post it to a forum or instantly post it or, or send it to somebody and say, hey, you know, was this a cooler? Could I have gotten away from it? You know, whenever something is prefaced with could I have gotten away from it typically means it was just a cooler. No, you probably could have gotten away from it. So the real question is simply, how did I play leading up to the point where the money went in? Did I make all the correct decisions? If you did, just a cooler. Move on with your life. It happens. If you made a mistake leading up to that, which is oftentimes the case, that's fine. Go back, do some analysis, explore how you could have played the hand better. Rock and roll. Don't make that mistake going forward. So coolers in general, not interesting hands. They're not good to review because they don't matter, right? This spot, again, just doesn't matter. It's going to happen equal distribution, you to your opponent and your opponent to you. So it doesn't matter who cares. And again, Julian, I promise this is not meant at you specifically. It's just I get a lot of, you know, cooler type hands and I want people to kind of rethink about the way they view coolers. It's not just something where, oh my God, you must have made a mistake because you lost a stack. You're going to lose a lot of stacks in this game. You're going to make a lot of stacks in this game. So don't worry about, you know, one-offs that are just random coolers because who cares? Just make sure you made the right decisions leading up to the point where the money went in. That's all that matters. All right, so end rant, done with all that. But I thought it was really important because I think too many people focus too much on coolers and don't focus enough on the stuff that matters. And that's what I don't want to see people fall into because it's a really, really bad trap to fall into. So again, the most important points in this hand, prefop, definitely looking to three bet that rather than just flat it. And then on the flop, again, as played with just a specific texture, specific opponent type, I'm much more inclined to just check call. Yes, the money's still going to get all in regardless. Yes, the cooler is still going to happen. No, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we make good decisions going forward. That's all we can do in this game. Can't control results, can only control the decisions that we make. So Julian, thanks for sending in this hand and thanks for bearing with me through the rant. Sorry it had to happen on your hand, but again, thought it was important to chit chat about. And if you or anyone else has a poker related hand or question, feel free to leave it on our Google Plus page. Leave a link for that in the description box. And also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.